Hello, I'm Apostolos and I'm an early stage researcher within the University of Strathclyde, Glasgow, Scotland, United Kingdom. I'm presenting today the paper entitled Benefits of Three-Phase Metering for Load Segregation, which was done in collaboration with Lina Stankovic, Vladimir Stankovic, also from the University of Strathclyde, and Zhu Feng Si from Discovery the Company. I'd like to state that this paper is part of GECO project, a project that has received funding from the European Union's Horizon 2020 Research and Innovation Program under the Marie Sklodowska Curie Grant Agreement number 955422. I shall now move forward and present a brief outline of today's presentation. First, the motivation behind the work will be presented. This will be followed by the contributions of the work. Next, a brief literature review for non-intrusive load monitoring techniques for three-phase data will be presented. After that, the methodology followed as well as the experimental results that were obtained will be presented. And finally, conclusions will be drawn. Three-phase installations are predominant in commercial and industrial settings as well as in residential settings in the majority of the Central and Northern Continental Europe as well as to other places around the world. Single-phase installations have lower limits of power availability which are not always able to cope with the end user's demand from high loads such as electric vehicles and heat pumps. Therefore, as it was outlined by the Association for Renewable Energy and Clean Technology, three-phase installations are slowly becoming the new standard for residential buildings to support the surge in end user demand from these high loads. In addition, the introduction of three-phase installations enables the installation of larger domestic solar photovoltaic systems when compared to current ones that are capped at the lower maximum power levels, imposed by the maximum load that single-phase installation can handle. Recent protocols, including Senelex and SMETS 2 protocol, make it obligatory for smart meters manufacturers to produce metering devices that are able to measure power, current, voltage and tangle between these vectors on a per-phase basis. A side effect of the introduction of these installations is that energy devices will be split across different phases and therefore the segregation performance of metering algorithms may be improved. The main contributions of this paper are first, the adaptation of the sequence subsequence in realm algorithm for different common household appliances while providing full details regarding the pre and post processing steps as well as the hyperparameters tuning. Secondly, the quantification of the gain and disaggregation accuracy when using per phase and aggregate signal, considering noisiness and sparsity metrics and different smart meter data granularities. Third, proposing a method of appliance, phase detection and release information regarding the phase on which its appliance of the echo dataset is connected to. Lastly, the labeling of the EV usage of the three-phase household in Germany for a period of one year via transfer learning with manual verification and releasing the labeled dataset. The two datasets that were published can be accessed through the University of Strathclyde's Pure portal with each of the datasets having its own dedicated digital object identifier number. The first dataset is named Smart Meter Electricity of the Household in Germany with EV charging annotation and contains energy consumption data of a single household in Germany in which an electric vehicle charger is present for a period of one year from the 1st of January 2021 until the 31st of December 2021. Timestamp and sampled at one minute intervals. The second dataset is named Appliance Phase Identification and Echo Dataset and is a supplementary material to the Echo Dataset published by Becky Letali containing information about the power phase on which its appliance is connected to. Literature is relatively scarce for three-phase DILM approaches, mainly due to the scarcity of three-phase public datasets. As three-phase is almost a standard in industrial applications, an event detection approach based on composite windows analysis was proposed for three-phase industrial metering installations. In non-industrial settings, very few public datasets with three-phase installation exist, with the ECHO dataset being the only that contain information from different households for a long period of time, including the per-phase signals. Zasinski et al. proposed a DNN approach to disaggregate some of the ECHO's devices, including fridges, freezers, PCs and washing machines, achieving different results but using only the aggregate signal of the three phases, it test the sum of the three-phase signals. 
Another approach, again using only the aggregate signal, was introduced by Rafik et al. using a four-layered bidirectional LSTM model to disaggregate some of the appliances of the ECHO dataset. To the best of our knowledge, till now there are no nil methods designed to exploit the three phases by disaggregating per phase. Next, the methodology that was followed will be presented. Firstly, ECHO dataset was pre-processed and houses 3 and 6 were discarded as they have activations for a short period of time. Therefore, houses 1, 2, and 4 and 5 were kept. Data were assembled in granularities of 10, 30, and 60 seconds in order to explore the effect of less granular data in energy disaggregation. Less granular data were explored so as to comply with protocols such as the SMETS2 protocol of the United Kingdom that defines the necessity of usage of less granular data in order to protect end users' privacy. The sparsity and the noiseness metrics were then calculated as these are two fundamental factors that can give an indication of the expected disaggregation accuracy. The dataset was then split in training and testing sets, keeping apart for validation. 10 days of each month were kept for testing, while the rest of them were kept for training and validation. The validation set consisted of the 10% of the whole dataset. A review regarding the different deep neural network of NIL models was performed, and the sequence subsequence model, which was highlighted by Huber et al. as one of the best performing networks, was chosen. Sequence to subsequence was selected as it offers a trade off between the computational load of the sequence to point and of the convergence spin of the sequence to subsequence. After that, the window size was selected based on the fact that sequence subsequence targets the middle part of the signal. Therefore, window size is given by equation 3 as omega almost equal but always greater than 2 times the usual length of appliance cycle period times the frequency of the samples. This step is vital as the targeted window must contain the whole activation of the appliance. Different appliances require different window length to be accurately disaggregated using the sequence to subsequence model. Window size can range from a few minutes for devices like coffee machines up to several hours for discussers and triers. Window size must always be a power of 2. In addition to that, gain in accuracy and loss due to less granular data was also calculated using equations 4 and 5. Gain in accuracy represents the improvement in accuracy when using the per phase signal when compared to the aggregate signal, and loss represents the reduction in accuracy when using less granular data. In general, it is expected that with the per phase segregation, accuracy will be improved, and therefore gain will be positive. Loss, on the other hand, is expected to be negative, as with the use of less granular data, it's expected that the segregation accuracy will be diminished. Lastly, the determination of the phase on which each appliance is connected to, as well as the labeling of a three-phase load is performed. Model is trained and tested on a small subset of the total dataset. More specifically, three models are trained using the 30% of the total dataset, one on each phase. Models on the phase where the appliance is connected will result in high estimated consumption output with high confidence level, whereas in all other phases the model prediction will be low. Match rate was used to compare the performance since it measures how well the model's output matches the ground truth when compared to other metrics that just average the output like mean absolute error. Models that produced a high match rate corresponded to the phase on which the appliance was connected to, whereas on the other two phases, load was very low. Three-phase load labeling was performed via transfer learning and validated through load symmetry. Results obtained using the aforementioned methodology will be presented in the next few slides. A summary of the results is depicted in Table 1. On the left of the table, there is a summary of the data used from the ECHO dataset, including the houses that were used, the appliances, and the duration of the data. The blue rectangle contains information deduced regarding the phase on which each appliance is connected to. The performance on certain devices can be greatly increased by using appliance phase data, 
whereas some others can be disaggregated only from the aggregated signal. Sparsity affects the accuracy, especially in lower frequency data. For example, the coffee machine in house 1 versus the coffee machine of house 5. In house 1, the activations of the coffee machine were less than 1 minute in duration and therefore disaggregation could not be performed for 1 min granularity. In house 1, accuracy of dryer segregation greatly increases due to the less noise as well as due to the absence of a similar load profile that was present on the same phase. Refrigerating appliances generally perform well, with freezers performing better than fridges. In house 4, the decreased performance of the fridge was due to the existence of a second fridge on the same phase that was not monitored through a smart plug. And therefore, sequence subsequence algorithm was also identifying these fridge. Sequence subsequence algorithm is worth noting that was able to discriminate the signals of the fridge and the freezer to signals that are quite similar, but due to the difference between their maximum power level and their duration, the algorithm was able to discriminate fridges from freezers. Regarding the disaggregation using different samples frequencies, a positive correlation exists between the loss and the granularity. As it can be deducted from Table 2, less granular data has a detrimental factor to the performance. This is especially visible in the dryer of household 1 for the aggregated signal, where the performance decreases when using 60 second data instead of 10 seconds data, in first losses that reach almost 60%. In general, devices with complex patterns and different states, such as washing machines and dryers, suffer significantly when disaggregated using less granular data. On the other hand, some devices with constant repetitive patterns such as refrigeration appliances tend to perform almost equally well with less granular data. If test freezes and freezers can sufficiently be disaggregated with the use of one minute data. This is an outcome of the repetitive pattern and their almost constant power consumption when compared to other appliances. Lastly, devices with very short activations, such as coffee machines, also benefit from more granular data. This is expected, as these devices can easily be buried under noise when using, for example, one wind data, as their activation may only last from tens of seconds to several minutes. Apart from the ability to increase the disaggregation performance on different appliances, the applicability of the per-phase segregation can be underlined by the feasibility of labeling an unlabeled dataset. This was demonstrated by labeling a prior unlabeled dataset using transfer learning. PICAN dataset, a widely used dataset that contains energy meterings for several households in the United States of America, as well as submeter DVs, was used. A subset of peak and households were used, and more specifically houses from Austin and New York, that had similar charging profiles with the one from the German household. Disaggregation was perform performed on a per phases basis using the PEC and dataset as training. As the VIT charger was a complete symmetrical load across the three phases, this information was exploited, it test the signal level and the simultaneous activations leading to an accurate estimation of the electric vehicle signal. False positives could be eliminated by taking into account symmetry and removing activations that were present only in one or two of the phases. The figure on the right depicts an instance of the aggregate signal as well as the signal of its phase with the EV activations marked. Therefore, blue line represents the aggregate signal and red line represents the EV activations. An estimated accuracy obtained when using 1 and 15 minute data is also presented in Table 3, with results for 1 minute data being marginally better than the results for the 15 minute data. Therefore, utility can be preserved even when using 15 minute data, which can enable the protection of the privacy of the end users. Now we will move forward to the conclusion section. Through this work, the improvement of load disaggregation per phase in three-phase installations over the traditional approach of disaggregating the sum of three phases was demonstrated quantitatively. 
In addition, it was demonstrated that appliances that tend to be hard to disaggregate in literature due to sparse activations and variable load profiles are more prone to noise from other loads and therefore per phase segregation can mitigate this problem. Devices like washing machines, dryers, coffee machines and microwaves benefit mostly from the per phases disaggregation as they demonstrate either complex patterns or very short or sparse activations that can easily be mixed up with other signals. Furthermore, it's worth stating that a careful appliances connection plan can be beneficial both for the stability of the grid as well as the performance of the NILM algorithms. Devices with similar load profiles, e.g. resistive kitchen appliances or more than one refrigeration appliances like freezers or freezers, may benefit from being spread across different phases as this enables power balance between phases and easier disaggregation due to the separation of similar and sometimes identical signals. Lastly, the feasibility of accurately labeling an EV based without the presence of ground truth by exploiting the phase symmetry of its load profile was demonstrated. However, this should be further demonstrated by the inclusion of more houses as currently that method was tested only on one single household. So, in this point, I would like to conclude my presentation and thank you for your time. I'm more than willing to answer to any questions that you may have. You can contact me directly to my email address as it was stated in the beginning of the presentation. Thanks again and goodbye.